Hey guys, uh, this is a second tutorial on excited states in Orca and so in this tutorial I'll show you how to uh, make an input uh, to compute the um, excited states in solvent and then we will kind of go through the output and finally we will see how to plot the spectrum um, using this uh, Orca Maps PC utility. So um, in this uh, video I'll be uh, basically following the steps in this um, probably like someone's lab I'm assuming. I'll give you the link uh, in the description below the video so you can go um, check it out for yourself. Uh, so the the point of the experiment, if we can call it that way, is to analyze uh, methyl orange, which which is an indicator. It's, um, it changes color depending on whether you're in um, acidic conditions or not. Uh, and uh, the solvent that we're going to be using is water, but you can also um, compute the same thing in acetone because they give as well experimental value so you can compare uh, what you get computationally with what you should get experimentally. And the interesting part about this molecule is that the um, the deprotonated state uh, is, is kind of what you expect but the protonated state does not pick up the proton on the oxygen that is linked to sulfur, instead it actually goes onto one of the nitrogens. And this creates uh, kind of this push of, of electrons and the positive charge gets fairly delocalized over the entire molecule and we will see how it influences the, um, the excited states and uh, the molecular orbitals as well. So to begin, uh, you can just copy paste the inputs uh, for the protonated and deprotonated states right from this tutorial over here. And let's do that. I'll just show you what I have here. So I haven't changed um, the keywords much. I just added this additional uh, part in the end. Uh, so this part um, over here. Uh, will tell Orca to print enough information into the dot out file so that you'll be able to visualize the molecular orbitals um, in Avogadro. And then this part is for people who have installed Orca in parallel and you want to specify how many processors to use. So the other important keywords that we have is this Cosmo um, parentheses water. This is the uh, solvent model that is used in Orca. You can read more um, in detail uh, about this in the Orca user manual. And uh, this part over here, the TDDFT section, describes different parameters that uh, will be used for the TDDFT run and they're very well summarized um, in this tutorial here as well, a bit if you have to scroll like to the uh, a bit back to the front of the document for the explanation. So now let's see what we get um, as output. So the the entire beginning of the the document the the dot out file is basically the optimization and then you get to this section with the excited states. Um, I talked about this before so I'm not going to go into detail here. Uh, what we're more in interested in is um, paying attention at the orbitals that are involved in the transitions. Uh, but if you keep on scrolling you will end up in this section uh, which has the absorption spectrum. Uh, so you can look at that and it's given in different um, units as well. So uh, for me, the, the easiest is nanometers, but some people prefer other things. You have all of this over here. So you can compare the protonated and deprotonated states um, in terms of output. Uh, 
but what I want to show you is um, how do you plot um, the spectrum. Okay, so for this we have this um, orca um, underscore maps PC utility, which is stored inside the orca directory, like where all of your orca um, files are. If you have installed it by default, it will be uh, just on your C drive. Um, and it, in order to call it, it's like the same way as to call Orca. Um, you will first navigate into the folder that contains your .out file. So for me, I already did that over here. That's why my line is so long. And then I would write... Um, so I guess I'll just restart from scratch for you to easy to follow so you write the name of the utility so it's orca underscore maps pc dot exe and then you put space and you write the name um, of the file that you're interested in so it's deprotonated um, dot out anything dot out right um, and then you have different parameters that you have to set the first parameter is indicating which type of spectrum you want for as its absorption, so we write ABS. Then you write the lower bound and the upper bound of the, um, the wavelengths that you want to look at. And the lower bound is uh, dash X zero. And then without any space, you write the, like, the number. So here I have 15,000. Um, and then you put dash x1 and you write the upper bound. So here I have 40 thousands, but you can put whatever corresponds to the numbers that you want to look at. And then the last two are the width of the, um, the peaks. So if you don't indicate anything there, the width would be one. So it's really like an ugly line. If you like them more as a little, you know, nice, um, white peak you can put a, a, some sort of number there put um, 200 so it's a dash w um, 200 and then the last one is the number of points that your x-axis will be separated into here i have two thousands then you click on enter you will get this little like output um, over here it's I already did it several times so it will be something like this and then if you open the folder with all of your files in there you will see this dot um, abs dot det file appear that's the one that was just created right now uh, and don't panic with this weird extension it's actually just a tab delimited file it looks like this it's kind of plain and boring um, and, and what was kind of upsetting is that everywhere that I looked in the user manual in um, in this um, Orca library uh, everywhere they're just like oh yeah look you get this file and then you can use any kind of program to plot okay what what Thanks, but like what are all these columns for? How come no one bothered indicating what these columns are? And then I found on the Orca uh, forum this random person just like mentioned it, you know, like along the lines of, oh yeah, by the way, you know, like, okay, well, great. How about you put this in the manual? That would kind of be useful. So if you like Excel, you can just open the file in Excel and it will prompt you to like uh, separate it automatically by um, space and it will create those five columns. If not, um, you can use the Python script I wrote, for example, or write your own. Um, the one I wrote is plotuvviz.py, it's on my GitHub, I'll give you the link below, you can go download it. It's just a Python plot um, to get the, uh, the picture. Uh, the way it works is that um, you, you write the name, uh, you write Python and then the, um, the name of the script, so plot underscore uvviz.py. 
uh, I have those like two dots backslash because I have the script in the directory that is just like above the one that I have my other file in so you don't have to write it if everything is in one place um, and then you give us parameter the name of the file with this funny extension .abs.dat and then you just click on enter um, and you will get a picture that looks like this or similar uh, so the x-axis is in um, centimeter uh, 1 over centimeter and then this is the intensity so if you open up the, the, the Python script you can actually add the, the titles and the names of axes if you please alright so um, yeah, n now let's get back to this file. If you don't want to use my script, you want to write your own, uh, you need to know what the columns are. So the first column is obviously the, um, the wavelengths. The second column is the total intensity. The third is the electric dipole, fourth is the magnetic dipole, and fifth is the quadruple contributions. So you can plot all of these things separately um, if you need to. Um, but if you just want the first one, I guess Excel is, is fine, or my script, or your own if you want to do that. Okay, so um, I hope I'm not making it too long but uh, if you go back to the um, the the lab here that they were making uh, they're actually asking you to look at like the molecular orbitals and kind of compare the protonated and deprotonated forms and look at the excited states and see what's the difference so I'm not gonna go like super thoroughly through it but uh, things to pay attention to is for example the deprotonated one you can see like the f the first uh, couple of transitions as really like orbital 78 to 80 77 to 80 it's very um, one orbital to the other there's like no mixing going on and if you look at the protonated one which has um, this interesting resonance structure going on so the the orbitals are delocalized you can see that there's a lot of mixing in orbitals here in the in the um, uh, transitions so that indicates that the or the electrons are very flowing around and, and mixing and matching and having lots of lots of fun jumping from one orbital to the other um, and if you open the um, that out file in Avogadro and look at the orbitals you can see the difference uh, immediately basically just by looking at the homo and lumo homo minus one um, but I'll leave you to do that on your own because I don't want to make it too long so I hope it was clear I hope it was useful um, and um, I'll, I'll see you next time